Soy, Yo Soy, Tembi, and Grabando. I got right microphone on Audacity. Or at least it's making the waves. Yeah, it's definitely right microphone. Boom shakalaka. Oh, that's good. That's good. Testing this microphone into Audacity. Oh, yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Bonkity bunkity bunk. All right. You ready to clap Pondo? Do you need sure to record the am. Zoom meeting? Or I guess you can't do that because we don't pay for Zoom anymore. I mean, I can, rec I can record it, but we're going to have to oh. pause it halfway through anyway. That's right. All right. Got it. All right, I'm ready to clap. Um, okay, hold on. All right, I'm ready. Took a big beat too there. Yeah? Yeah, you were like, clap, 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 clap. That's beat three. No, your beat, what I'm saying, your beat two was longer. Oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. You went like, one, like, like, like four, four to like, I don't know. I don't remember what time signatures work. Six, eight. Something, Five, eight. something with a longer da, measure. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, seven, eight would do it, right? That's da, 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 right? Uh, I, I don't, I don't remember. Da, 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 yeah, that's it. None of this stuff means anything to me anymore. No? No. Weren't you in a band? Yeah, we played in four, four, we played pop punk. We Surely played in least. four, four. You, I'm sure I could find you a pop punk song in six eight, easy. Yeah, but like I hate to break it to you, but like six eight is just is just two four. It's just like, slow. It's just slow, like <laughs> slow two. Yeah, we don't Some... like we don't sit down to write drop the girl music and put a fucking time to signature on the front of a page. I can't imagine. Like I understand that that's not how you and Michael do it, but I cannot fathom that. Yeah, no, it's mostly just like Michael will be like, and I'm like, okay, what if we did that, but like bouncy? Like, yeah, every song starts with, every Drop the Girl song starts with Vesuvius by Frank Kelly. Yes, um, thank you, I knew it. Yeah, every single Drop the Girl song, yeah. It's, you know, Broken Bones is really just... Yeah. I don't know what's going on right now, but it smells like somebody killed the skunk in my office. I don't know how to tell you it's probably not a skunk. I mean, yeah, I doubt it would be a skunk, but like it smells like skunk. Mm. There's a an herb that smells like that. No, not really. Uh like I know the difference. I don't always. If the skunk is far away or the weed is particularly bad. I mean, there's a, like, there's a more chemical stink to skunk stink. Weed stink Which is more me. like. So we're recording this podcast. I hate to cut you off. Yeah. I have to take this shot of bourbon before I do my bit. Okay. And once I start my bit, you can't stop me until I stop me. Okay. So you want to, are you doing like an intro or are you just going for it? I'm doing, like the first part is an intro. Okay. I'm good then. But I need to see your face while I do this. I I mean, like, I'm not going anywhere. Well, I need you to be looking at me though. Okay. <laughs> I don't I'm, need you to be like, oh, let me check out and check my cell phone. No, my phone's turned upside down. I need your full love and support right now. Uh, you're, you're getting as much of it as I have. <laughs> All right. Woo! Welcome, adventurers, to the grandest stage of all. Tonight, we gather as two mighty forces clash in an epic battle for supremacy. 
Prepare yourselves for the ultimate showdown in the mystical realm of basketball. Get ready for the NBA Finals, where the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat will face off in a clash of titans. Picture, if you will, a coliseum filled with fervent fans, their cheers reverberating through the halls. The energy cackles in the air as the Denver Nuggets, led by their valiant heroes, Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, step onto the court. These stalwart warriors have journeyed far, displaying extraordinary skills and unwavering determination. They possess the spirit of resilience, defying all odds on their path to greatness. But wait, for their opponents are none other than the Miami Heat, a formidable team whose fiery passion burns brighter than the sun-soaked sands of their home city, led by the indomitable Jimmy Butler and the mighty Bam Adebayo. They bring a fi fierce tenacity that strikes fear into the hearts of their foes. With each dribble, pass, and shot, they embody the true essence of the heat, scorching the court with their intensity. These two forces, the Nuggets and the Heat, have overcome tremendous trials throughout their campaign. Now they stand on the precipice of destiny, ready to etch their names into the annals of basketball lore. The NBA Finals become the battleground where heroes rise, legends are born, and stories unfold that will be retold for generations to come. So gather your allies, don your team colors, and brace yourself for the clash of worlds. Witness the raw power, the skillful maneuvers, and the unyielding spirit as the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat collide in a symphony of competition. The outcome hangs in the balance as the fate of the realm is decided. Who will emerge victorious? Only time will reveal the answer. Adventurers, prepare yourselves for the NBA Finals, an epic battle that transcends mere sport. It is a tale of heroism, camaraderie, and the unyielding pursuit of glory. The stage is set, and the destiny of the Nuggets and the Heat intertwines. Are you ready to witness history in the making? Let the games begin. That's it. Am I allowed to speak now? You can speak now. That was a better story than the entire campaign in 2K23. <laughs> <laughs> 2K is so challenging because it's like, I want to play my player. That sounds like fun. I want to. And then like the walk through the city thing sucks. The like the way your player is treated for the first 30 hours of gameplay sucks. sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um. Although I did learn that once you finish the part where you get a skateboard with the first player, and then if you go back and, and do a second player, they have the skateboard automatically. I didn't have to get the skateboard. I was just I just had it automatically. No, I don't think that's true. No, I definitely did. Oh. Maybe I did too and just did not access. <laughs> I don't know. That would have made things a lot faster, I'll tell you that much. That was a great story, Tyler. Oh, that's not the story. That is the intro to my game. No, I know. Well, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a whatever. It was a great monologue, a soliloquy. So there's going to be a few of those tonight. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're all that long, but they are. So our listeners of this show, notably big basketball fans. These notably people. not huge big basketball fans. basketball fans in the bacon and eggs fandom. So what I've done is. Uh, I wanted to tell the stories of the Nuggets and the Heat uh, to our listeners in the styles and voices and mannerisms of different sort of like celebrity or big personality, uh, either characters or, or, or celebrities. And so game, you do a bunch of impressions? I'm gonna, well, I'm, impressions I feel like is the wrong word because I don't necessarily want to sound exactly like these people. Give me your Ernie Johnson. I don't know who Ernie Johnson is. He's the he's the white guy on the on the show. Like the the mid game show, the one with Shaq and Charles Barkley. Oh, I only and, watch uh, for Shaq and Charles Barkley. They crack and, me and, up. And and Kenny. They oh Kenny my Smith. God. Kenny I watch Jet. them I watch Shaq and Charles Barkley. I guarantee, listener, if you're not a basketball fan and you're listening to this episode, you're like, I'm doing this because I support Tyler and Ethan, but I, they cannot convince me to watch basketball. I implore you to watch a halftime report with Shaq and Charles Barkley because Kenny and the other guy will make a really Ernie good, Johnson. like, Ernie Johnson will make a really good, like, stat-based point 
about like player tenacity or something or or three point shooting or something like that. And then Charles Barkley would be like, "Listen, man, I don't really know about all that. All I know is I can see it on their face. When Jason Tatum's out there, he's ready to ball. And when he's ready to ball, you know that that means danger for the Heat." And, and then, then Shaq is like, "How many buckets did you have in the finals, Charles?" <laughs> and then, but immediately, less than me. hey, less than me. Immediately, doesn't matter what Shaq said before this. Shaq would be like, "Yeah, I agree with Charles right here." You know, uh, <laughs> he always agrees with Charles Barkley every single time. Actually, he doesn't say Charles; he calls him Chuck every time. Ugh. I love it. <laughs> Did you see the one where they dropped a bunch of ping pong balls on Charles Barkley for no reason? I I saw that that happened. I couldn't quite figure out the context. <laughs> I, I, I guess I there was either. none. I just I saw the un the the uncontext video of Charles going, "Y'all better not drop a bunch of ping pong balls on me." And then, and then happened, they fell. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell me about the de- – <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the Denver Nuggets is such a lame name for a, like – like when they when they were the Denver Nuggets and, like, Lamelo, not Lamelo, uh, Carmelo Anthony was on in, like, the, the early 2000s, I was like, oh, yeah, this is not a – this is such an unserious team. And now they're, like, an NBA Finals team that's, like, a very serious team, and, and they're still called the Denver Nuggets. And I'm just like, you can't – that's a really silly name. Like, I get it's, like, gold nuggets, but all I think of is chicken nuggets. I don't think they lean into, like, the Denver being the Mile High City chicken nuggets thing enough. Are those two things related? Like, is the chicken better higher no, up? No, is no, no, like no. Ginger I think ale? chicken nuggets are better the higher you are. And Denver is, like, a Well, like they're a not the city. Denver 420 Blazits, like... <laughs> They are the Portland Blazets. They, they, Denver, the Denver Nuggets have existed longer than Colorado was. Like we're the weed state. <laughs> uh, like the Denver Nuggets have been around a long time. So I've got a few of these. Um, I've used ChatGPT to help me write these. Okay, but uh, I'm very proud of my prompts, and I'm very proud of the changes that I have made. That being said, occasionally ChatGPT has set me up to introduce myself as the character that I'm portraying, so I'm just going to introduce myself as me. Okay. Go for and it. Then, oh, and the game is for you to figure out who, who it's supposed to be. Okay. And the sooner So like a you Jeopardy buzz, clue. Yeah, but the, but the soliloquies are not short. Right. Because we want the listener to so learn like, about the So not like teams. a Jeopardy clue. Kind of, but imagine the Jeopardy clue took like three or four minutes to say. Yeah. But that same, like, I was a 1994, uh, you know, Jim Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer. So none of these are basketball players. I will make that clear. That's fine. They sure are, they are all, they're all people disconnected from the game of basketball. How disconnected? Like, like Derek Jeter or like Walt Whitman? Ooh, I would say like Derek Jeter and Walt Whitman. Okay. I would say those are very apt descriptions so two, of how... two of the goats. <laughs> I would say all four of these are goats. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Uh, do you? So we're, we're going to start with the teams. Do you want to start with the Nuggets or the Heat? Um, I, I don't... I, where, where should we start? I, I'm confused by the question. So, so there's going to be four stories for uh, one is about rounds. so i guess i didn't explain this yeah there's four rounds of this okay um i want the listener who has maybe never watched basketball or or maybe is like a like a super bowl fan but for basketball so they like they click on the finals uh i want them to have a little bit of context for who the two teams are and then the star players for each of those two teams well i think i think propriety necessitates you talk about the nuggets first they are the one seed they did kind of earn it okay So introduce Goliath first. So I can't do this voice, and I think you would punch me if I did it for four minutes. Uh, (laughs) It's Jerry Seinfeld. No, you'd love that. What's with the Nuggets? (laughs) Is there even an air in Denver to have a basketball? (laughs) I only know about the New York Knicks. (laughs) What is it with basketball? The playoffs. Playoffs. Basketball's about going to a game. Playoffs. All right, so start with the start with the Denver, the Nuggets of Denver and tell me about your first your first person. Okay. Oh, hi there. 
Tyler is excited to tell you all about the Denver Nuggets. Are you ready for some fun? Great. Let's go on a basketball adventure with Tyler and the Nuggets. Denver Nuggets, they're a team so bright, playing basketball from morning to night. They dribble, they shoot, and they pass so well. With the Nuggets, you're in for a magical spell. Tyler wants to tell you a secret. The Nuggets have been some of the most talented players in the whole wide world. Just imagine watching Nikola Jokic, the jolly giant, who's not only a skilled big man, but also a masterful passer. He can make the basketball dance. And oh, Jamal Murray, the sensational scorer who can make these three-point shots rain down like confetti? Wow. (laughs) But wait, there's more. The Nuggets have a fantastic team spirit. They work together like a family. They support each other, pass the ball with smiles, and make their fans jump for joy. Tyler loves seeing their high-flying dunks and incredible teamwork. It's like a basketball surface. It's like a basketball circus, but without the elephants. <laughs> oh, and have you heard about their coach, Michael Malone? He's like a wise wizard who guides the team with his basketball spells. He's a friend to all the players and helps them grow and learn. With Coach Malone, the Nuggets are always ready for an adventure on the court. Denver Nuggets, they're a dream come true. Bringing happiness to me and to you. Their energy is contagious. It's true. Join the Nuggets and see what they can do. And guess what? The city of Denver is a magical place too. The Nuggets bring so much joy to their fans in the Mile High City. With the breathtaking skills and the roar of the crowd, watching a Nuggets game is like being on a roller coaster of excitement. So whether you're a basketball fan or just love to have fun, Tyler thinks the Denver Nuggets are the perfect team for you. They're full of laughter, magic, and a whole lot of slam dunks. So come on, join Tyler and let's cheer for the Denver Nuggets together. (laughs) was that glinda from the wizard of oz oh that is a good guess i think if i could do the voice i'll give you like a line in the voice okay oh hi there no that's not the voice that's That's the wrong voice that's mickey mouse that's the right timbre but the wrong voice is it barbie barbie's a good guess it is not barbie it is a toy it's a toy Okay. It is. That sounds sort of like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. And is like a tour guide. Yeah. Both of those things are true. This feels like it's supposed to be obvious. Um, I think. I mean, if I could do the voice, it would be very obvious. I think it the is songs, a very the distinct songs voice. Songs are tripping me out. Songs are definitely part of it. Yeah, I know. But, like, I can't. Is this like a like a Tara Strong voice? Or like uh, a... No, Tara Strong did not do this voice. Um, okay. It is a very distinct voice. I think if I tell you the voice actor, it will. Uh, oh no, I don't think you know who this is. I, I yeah, I'm 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 stumped. I can't. Your 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 Mickey Mouse thing threw me off. Um, I can't do the voice because every time I try, it ends up Mickey Mouse. Okay. So it's a it toy. is a character like Mickey. It is a toy second. It is a character first, but it is definitely it's a, a toy. toy second. I have no idea. The answer is Elmo. Elmo. Yeah. Can you see how Mickey Mouse and Elmo would get messed up? Yeah, I should have got it from the. Okay, so the 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 third person Tyler thing that should yeah. have, that should include me in more. But I didn't, I didn't quite have my head all the way wrapped around, like, what you meant when you were like, I'm just going to introduce it as me. Elmo. 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 I don't feel like ChatGPT captured the way that Elmo talks there. I, I It might have done like, better than I played the character. Maybe. I, you were a little bit too articulate for Elmo. But that was cool. That was good. That was very good. I was I was there, man. I was bought into it. I don't think Elmo would be a Denver Nuggets fan, though. Did you like my songs? I had to cheer for the heat in my songs. Or for the Nuggets, rather. I can't. No, I got nothing. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Did you? I had to cheer for the Nuggets during my songs. 
Yeah, I, I, there was one part where you were like, Tyler thinks the Denver Nuggets are a perfect choice for you. And I was like, I don't think he does. I don't think Tyler I don't think thinks Elmo that does either. But you I think the freezing. Knicks were knocked out pretty early. And so Elmo's, what's that? I don't like this internet going out thing. Yeah. Hello? I, I got nothing, man. Are you there? I got you now. I don't got you now. I had you, and then I lost you. Yeah, I'm here, man. I've back? been here the whole Are time. Are you there? I, 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 again, oh, I've okay. been here the whole time. <laughs> you're the one that's freezing. Good. I missed. <laughs> no, you're the one that's freezing. No, I, hey, <laughs> I'm not the one that had to log off in the middle of restricted section because I was frozen. Uh, I was there for that. I recorded it. All right. This next one, I will accept. Yeah. I will accept three or four different answers. I I don't know how to do this voice. It is an iconic. Well, it is a voice I think you know. Okay. But I'm going to approach it. Well, I know that you know the voice, but I'm going to approach it with with intrinsic talent okay Okay? (laughs) i'm gonna approach it the way i would approach it okay but with the script that this person would have written ladies and gentlemen welcome to a special episode of on the heat beat podcast where we dive deep into the sizzling world of the miami heat i'm your host tyler carlin and today we're going to explore why the heat are not just a team but a force to be reckoned with So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and let's turn up the heat. Now, when it comes to the Miami Heat, there's something truly captivating about this franchise. It's more than just basketball. It's a way of life. From the moment you step into the foot of American Airlines Arena, you can feel the electric energy buzzing through the air. The sea of red and black, the passionate fans chanting in unison. It's an experience that leaves you breathless. Time. I haven't heard a single word you said. No, you oh, it was so good. I just right, keep getting I'll... like, uh, maybe try turning off your video. Okay, let me try that. See if that can gets you hear me better. Any more internet? Can you hear me better? I think so. Hello, my name is Tyler. So. I can Hello? hear you. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay, cool. Let's try it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of On the Heat Beat Podcast, where we dive deep into the sizzling world of the Miami Heat. I'm your host, Tyler Carlin, and today we're going to explore why the Heat are not just a team, but a force to be reckoned with. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and let's turn up the heat. Yeah, yeah. (sighs) Now, when it comes to the Miami Heat, there's something truly captivating about this franchise. It's more than just basketball. It's a way of life. From the moment you step foot into the American Airlines arena, you can feel the electric energy buzzing through the air. The sea of red and black, the passionate fans chanting in unison. It's an experience that leaves you breathless. Ding, 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 ding. But what sets the Miami Heat apart from the rest? Let's talk about the remarkable culture. Coach Eric Spolstra has built a team that exemplifies resilience, grit, and unity. It's a culture that embraces hard work, discipline, and dedication. They don't just play for themselves, they play for the entire city of Miami, a city known for its bright, vibrant diversity and vibrant nightlife. Ching chang, ba-dum-bum-bing. Now, let's talk about the roster. The Heat have assembled a group of players that perfectly embody the franchise's DNA. From the fierce and charismatic Jimmy Butler, who leaves everything on the court, to the sharpshooting virtuoso Duncan Robinson, who can rain threes from anywhere on the floor, this team is filled with talent. But it's not just the star power that makes the Heat special. It's the way they come together as a collective unit, working seamlessly to outsmart and outmaneuver their opponents. They have a knack for turning up the intensity when it matters most, a quality that has propelled them to numerous deep playoff runs and brought home three NBA championships. Beyond their on-court success, the Miami Heat are deeply rooted in their community, from their commitment to social justice initiatives to their, extensive, to their extensive charitable efforts, this team knows the importance of using their platform to make a difference. 
They strive not to be just champions on the court, but also champions for change off the court. And let not and let's not forget the allure of Miami itself. The vibrant city with its stunning beaches, thriving art scenes, and world-class cuisine provides the perfect backdrop for this extraordinary team. The Miami Heat truly represent the spirit of the city, bold, passionate, and unrelenting. So my friends, if you're looking for a team that embodies the essence of basketball, a team that gives it all both on and off the court, look no further than the Miami Heat. Whether you're a diehard fan or just starting your journey as a basketball enthusiast, the Heat will capture your heart and leave you longing for more. So let's heat things up together and witness the Miami Heat blaze their path to greatness. Thank you for joining me today on On the Heat Beat. Until next time, stay passionate, stay fierce, and keep your eyes on the Miami Heat. Good night, Miami. Is that Roman Mars? Ooh, Roman Mars is a great guess. That I think I put more Roman into that than I did who this actually is because I've listened to more Roman, but it was not Roman Mars. Okay, so is it, it's it's somebody from television then? It is somebody from television. Like like Lester Holt. Lester Holt is an answer that I will accept. Um, but like but like a nightly news. It is the nightly newsman. The nightly newsman is the nightly newsman of of our lifetime. I, I, I can't. Brian you, Wilson. Brian Williams. No, not Brian Williams. Brian Williams is a great guess. I'd take that too. But no, come on. I can't. Do, I can't think of anybody that's on the news other than your dad and Lester Holt. Okay, who did Lester Holt replace? Uh it's a, <laughs> I, once you hear it, you're gonna be I, so I'm, mad. I'm aware, but I, I, I can't like I cannot put a name to a a, a name. Um, I, not Dan Rather. Um, oh my god, I cannot believe you I, haven't gotten. This. I can't either. <laughs> Do you just want to know? I'm. I think you'll get the next two, but I. Uh. Lester Holt replaced Brian Williams. Okay, then. Who did Lester Holt compete with? I don't know. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Ethan. Cooper. He's not the nightly news guy. He's CNN. He is, he is the exactly. He's CNN. He's uh, I, I could I could see Anderson Cooper. Yeah. That no. You actually did a pretty good Anderson Cooper. I was actually gonna ding you for your Roman Mars impression because <laughs> I forgot about like I for, I didn't even think it could be like TV like um I I was just like he's absolutely going for for ninety nine percent invisible. No, Which that would be, would be a, different. A very it would it would be very different. It would be a really interesting episode of ninety nine PI on the Miami why, Heat. Why why you should be a Miami Heat fan? Why you should be a, a Miami Heat fan? Yeah, the Heat are more than just a team; they're a logo. <laughs> <laughs> That's my ninety nine PI impression. <laughs> their logo. <laughs> their logo was a basketball that is on fire going through a hoop. But what does that represent, and what does it mean to the city of Miami? Well, for that. We turn to South America. In a small city in Bhutan, which is in Southeast Asia. <laughs> I'm Roman Mars. I'm Roman Mars. I'm Michael from Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. The Miami Heat are the greatest team in the history of basketball. But could you put a flaming basketball through a hoop? That's that's 100%. <laughs> you got that one down. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So so uh, we got we're two we're one for one. Well, no, we're not one for one. We're two we're two down. One one from each team, and I've gotten zero so far. I do like this though. I feel like you're just telling me stories, and it's fun. But well, like, and I think it's a weird per- like lack of participation for for what I'm used to from a podcast, which I'm fine with. It just like I'm sitting over here like I'm supposed to be doing something. Uh, but you're I'm supposed to be cheering me on because this scares the shit out. Oh, you're of doing me. great, man. You're doing great. Um, okay. Don't yeah, I'm I'm just apparently bad at this game. Don't let that. Uh, well, the game, the game. The, okay, so admittedly, the next two are significantly easier. Okay. Um. And if I could have done the Elmo voice, you would have gotten the Elmo thing, but that would have been fully insufferable. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to listen to Elmo for Hi. really any period of time. Elmo here. Elmo likes Rocco. No, you really can't do it. I don't think I could do it, but you definitely can't do it. 
Rock goes just on rock. That was close. Yeah, it's it's missing like a like a um I don't know, there's some quality to Elmo that's not being represented cuz I think you just heard too much Mickey in your life. You know what's crazy is up until like adulthood I'd never heard I mean not never, like I I could recognize their voices, but I like had never given much thought to Mickey Mouse or Elmo. Probably cuz cuz Mickey Mouse was a completely irrelevant character for most of our childhood despite being um the mascot the mascot yeah is what he like wasn't in stuff and still really isn't in stuff that matters in any way it's weird that he is not in something that is for all ages i i would agree um this is my consistent issue with mickey mouse is that he's specifically for kids it's not even specifically for kids he's just like when was the last there's not mickey mouse like movies there hasn't been for a long time no, but there's shows. Yeah, but like Disney Channel doesn't matter. Well, it's not Disney Channel; it's Disney Junior, Junior, which is its own channel. Whatever. Um, we have three and a half yeah, minutes left on this back. call. Yeah. What up? Sorry, my audio was muted and my camera was on. The exact opposite of what we need. That did help a lot, by the way, when you turned the camera off. I could hear you through that hole. Well, that thing. stinkos because I like the camera. Yeah, it helps I me. know, but I'd, I'd rather be able to hear you than than not hear or see you. Yeah, no, I got you. Um. Cool. All right. So we're, we finished Elmo and Anderson Cooper, two of my favorite social, not social, two of my favorite popular media personalities. I know that you're a big Elmo guy. I'm actually not. Um, Behind that facade. I mean, I, of... I, I would say that I, I growing up, I was much more of like an Elmo guy than a Mickey guy, for sure. Um, I watched Sesame Street. Sesame Street is core core. Um, I, I I much prefer Sesame Street to like the Muppets. Uh, I don't really like, I don't really like puppets that much, or, nor do I like people that insist on uh, the Muppets versions of movies being the best versions of movies because it's just not true. I mean, the Christmas Carol one is tough. No, you, know? you can like the Muppets Christmas Carol, but like it's not like it doesn't have anything on like the actual. It's it, like. It's a good enough version, but the Christmas Carol is 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 like a serious thing. I like the Mickey Christmas Carol. Of course you do. <laughs> it is one of my favorites, believe it or not. Are you ready I, for the third yeah, one? I just don't know why it kills people to like, you know, watch something for grown ups every now and then. Uh it doesn't kill me. But I don't work in uh watching things for children. I mean, I, I don't either. Most of the things that, that I have to see for work, I have either already seen or would see anyway. Although, I don't know. I, we, we were talking about this the other day about, about where my relationship with Marvel would be if it wasn't for uh, Bacon and Eggs. And I don't know if Bacon and Eggs would have done Marvel if it wasn't for your brothers. So, like, mm. I have no idea what my relationship... Because, like, 
I hadn't seen a bunch of Marvel movies when we started this show. Either way, I have to be okay with people being like, oh, yeah, The Muppet's Christmas Carol is the best version. But uh, people don't have to be okay with me saying that it's not. And I think that's stupid. So mm, Interesting. Yeah. That's really the thing is like is I'm just tired of people acting like the 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 kid focused things are the only things that are okay. That's mostly why I don't like the Muppet things. That's what I'm saying. And they're puppets and puppets are creepy. You're creepy. Do you have any non puppet ones that you want to give me? <laughs> like is the next one like Miss Piggy? Because I'll also punch you if you do that voice for four minutes. No, although I almost literally today's episode was between talking about the NBA finals and uh, somebody I thought was the same person as Miss Piggy as as uh, as as Miss Piggy. What? Like what? What does that mean? Uh, I'll explain after I do. Do you want Nikola Jokic or do you want Jimmy Butler? I think just go for Jokic and then go for Butler. All right, on Jokic, you get to pick one, two, or three. All three are think are things that you would get. Although I think three is going to be the most difficult. I'll go with two. No, two is going to be the one I'm worst at. <laughs> okay, I'll go with one. Ah, uh, no, no, roll again. <laughs> you want to pick three? No, I don't. I want you to roll again. An honest roll. An on- oh, you want to you want to roll a d three? Uh, sure. Hey, Siri, that's what it takes. roll a three-sided dice. It's one this time. All right. According to Siri. Ready? I'm ready. All right. Listen up, lads and ladies. Tyler Carlin here, and today we're going to talk about Nikola Jokic, the Serbian sensation tearing up the basketball court. Now, let me tell you, this bloke is a real deal. And he's got some moves that will make your head sprint. So sit your ass down, buckle up, and let's get on with it. First things first, Jokic is a beast. I mean, he's a massive bloke. But he moves like a gazelle out there. His footwork, agility, and basketball IQ are off the charts. Watching him navigate through defenders and those smooth passes and crafty moves, it's like witnessing a bloody magician pulling tricks out of his hat. But it's not just about the fancy footwork, mate. Jokic's game is built on grit and determination. This man is as tough as they come. He battles in the paint, fights for rebounds like a junkyard dog, and his toughness is unmatched. He's the kind of player who won't back down from a challenge and won't hesitate to give it his all, even when the going gets tough. And let me tell you something else. Jokic's passing game is something to behold. He's like a bloody quarterback out there throwing dimes left and right. His court vision is remarkable, and his ability to thread the needle with those precise passes is poetry in motion. He sees the game unfold in ways that most players can only dream of. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tyler, he's a big man. Does he have the touch? Well, my friend, let me tell you. Jokic's shooting touch is smoother than a freshly brewed pint. He can drain shots from anywhere on the floor, and he's got a sweet touch around the rim. It's like watching a bloody sniper in action. But here's the best part. Jokic's attitude. He's a no-nonsense kind of bloke. He doesn't care about the fame or the spotlight. He just wants to play the game that he loves, like me. He's a tough player through and through, always looking to make his teammates better. He's a glue that holds them together, a leader who leads by example. So if you're looking for a player who's got the skills, the toughness, and the heart, look no further than Nikola Jokic. He's the kind of player that will have you on your feet, screaming your bloody lungs out, and cheering for more. He's a force to be reckoned with, and you better believe he'll leave his mark on a game of basketball. All right, that's enough from me. Now go out there, support Jokic, and watch him do his thing. And remember, be like Jokic. Tough, determined, and ready to bloody conquer the world. Now blutter off and get on with it. Uh, that's that's Idris Elba. Idris Elba's the voice, I think, that came through more than anything else. Def- it definitely was. Um. So this is a character. This is a character. This yep. is a character. The ending of that, that like where where you, where you brought it back around, is like now remember. <laughs> felt, like a, th- felt like felt like a cutscene from like a Call of Duty game. 
I actually do think that that is uh, indicative of this character. I think that would be like I I can very clearly imagine this character giving this speech. Uh, it's a little long and wordy for the character. I think that's just because of the the program like trying to put as many words into it as it can. I think this person would say significantly less. Is it Roy Kent? It is Roy Kent. Oh, man. you, uh, uh, Tyler, I love you. That is not the Roy Kent voice at all. I know it's not, but I got into that groove with the Idris Elba yeah, thing. Yeah, no, and that I was a like, great Idris Elba impression. Like, And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to roll with this. I don't really know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, stay them. No, Elba. It's <laughs> Elba. I got it. Actually, you know what? It, what it sounded like was the, uh, what? oh, God, I got to look this up. Uh, hang on a second. It is Kobna Holdbrook Smith, who is the person that reads Midnight Riot by Ben Aronovich. That is who I thought of. <laughs> That's a hundred percent. Like that is the exact voice you just did. And let me tell you something else. Magic is not like what you think. All right, I can make a light with my brain. <laughs> you got that. You got that. A hundred percent. Yeah, Roy Kent is much more. I, would, I don't know if you could talk in the... I don't know if I could talk in the Roy Kent voice for, for that long, but yeah, I, I'd be worried about you, Jonathan Roy, because it's so much like, Roy, Yeah, listen. It, let me tell you about Roy... Let me let tell, me you, tell about you about Nikola Jokic. Jokic. What Jokic does better than any of you is he gets up and down the fucking basketball court. <laughs> it's because it takes him three steps to get... I don't know one. which one of you I night because I don't see so well at night anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Roy Kent okay Roy Kent there's no world in which Roy Kent is a Denver Nuggets fan no well I think there is who did he play for what who did he play for before uh Chelsea did he play for Chelsea yeah brother you have got to watch the, for the third season <laughs> They played for Chelsea. Uh, yeah, he was a legend at Chelsea. He's Frank Lampard. Okay, well, like, hold on. I'm trying to figure that's out. That's who he's supposed to be because he cursed Frank Lampard in real life. I think that Chelsea is probably – this is me not knowing a ton about the culture of uh, Premier League football. I think Chelsea is probably – it feels like the Heat to me or the Bulls. Chelsea is – oh, God. Hold on. I got to think about this. I got to think about this. Chelsea, what team in pro basketball throws? No, Chelsea's the Lakers. 100%. No, the, Chelsea's no. the Lakers. No, like United is the Lakers. No, United is. United's not that good right now. Uh, but Chelsea is, Chelsea is the team that throws a billion dollars at the problem and still finishes 10th. Oh, the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees are in first place in the AL East, I'm pretty sure, right now. And but I was, I was trying well, to compare it to basketball. Because Manchester City is the Yankees. So if you're saying that they're the team that throws a billion dollars at it but never gets anywhere, you're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. So when you say you're a Chelsea fan, you're saying you're a Cowboys fan. Uh, no. I'm not. I'd never. I would never say that. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Your Cowboys fan is what I heard. no, absolutely not. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea's an interesting one because they have been, they were very good for a very long time. Uh, they're not the Lakers because the Lakers were good this year. They made the playoffs. Uh, Chelsea would not have made the playoffs despite ha- spending a, a literal billion dollars in the the winter transfer window. That's insane. Yeah, you're not kidding because <laughs> they came out hot dog shit on the other side. It's incredible. Um, it's like the opposite of Moneyball, <laughs> like the uh, the the polar opposite, uh, which is largely what my story was going to be about today. Is why Moneyball is a bad thing. Uh, Moneyball is a great thing. It's not actually. Sabermetrics was- is ruining the game of baseball. But that's a. I think at this point, I think that's a topic for a different day. But yeah, Roy Roy Kent tells me about uh, Nikola Jokic. So who's going to tell me about James Michael Jordan Jr. Butler? 
They are eerily similar looking, for what it's worth. Jimmy Butler and, and Michael Jordan. Oh, I thought you meant Nikola Jokic. I was like, bro. No, no. Jimmy Butler and Michael Jordan. Bro, one of those is literally from Serbia. Yeah, one of them's literally white, yeah. And one yeah. of them's very not white. I'm trying to decide how I want to... I had a character lined up, but I don't know if that's the one. So I'm who are the other two? Miss Frizzle and Benoit Blanc. I never would have gotten Miss Frizzle. Yeah, you would. Ever. Yeah, no, I, no, don't, I don't know what I think Miss Frizzle sounds like off the top of my head. Wait, you said Benoit Blanc was going to be the hardest to get? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, not the hardest to get, but the hardest for me to do. Oh. Miss Frizzle would have been the hardest to get. Okay, so Miss Frizzle was three. Yeah. Okay. Miss Frizzle had a couple lines in there that are very, like, punny. Like, there was a lot of, like, buckle up and, and hop on and... You know what I mean? Like, there was a lot of, like, sort of yeah. school bus related. For sure. No, I just, I thought that you were saying that Benoit Blanc was going to be the hardest to get. And I was like, no, I would get it from, so, basketball. <laughs> Nikola <I'm> Jokic <laughs> is a center for the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> now, he's better at putting the basketball in the hoop than just about anybody else this season. Who would Benoit Blanc cheer for in the NBA? Whichever team had the greatest story. I bet I bet Benoit Blanc would be like a New Orleans Pelicans fan. Well, I love the Pelicans because they are owned by I don't know who. Or like a like a like a Charlotte uh, Hornets fan. You know they say Charlotte's the Queen City. <laughs> <laughs> I just I love this Lamelo Ball. <laughs> his father this this man really seems like he's got daddy issues and is trying to prove something on the basketball court all right tell me about james butler i'm i, I i've tried a couple different ones here oh you know what i think i've got it i think i've got it all right I don't even know who I had for this one. Hold on, I need you to pick one or two. Hey Siri, flip a coin. Two. All right. I think this one would be fun for me. Okay. Tell me about it. It's, sorry, it's loading. You're good. Welcome, sports fans, to another edition of the show. Today, we have a special segment dedicated to the one and only Jimmy Butler. We'll dive deep into his remarkable journey, his philanthropic endeavors, and his impact on the Miami Heat. So buckle up and get ready for a fascinating ride. Is this Jim Nance? No, but that is uh, good feedback. Thank you. Now, let's start with the early life of Jimmy Butler. John Madden. Born and raised in the tough neighborhoods of Houston, Texas, Butler faced numerous challenges growing up. His childhood was far from easy but it molded him into the resilient and determined person we see on the basketball court today. He overcame adversity, and his story serves as an inspiration to all those who face their own struggles. But it's not just Jimmy... <laughs> God, this one's harder than I thought. But it's not just Jimmy Butler's journey that captivates us. It's his commitment to making a difference on and off the court. That's not where it is. From the beginning of his career, he has been actively involved in philanthropic initiatives. Butler has used his platform to shine a light on issues close to his heart, supporting causes such as education, homelessness, and the community development. One of his notable projects is the Jimmy Butler Foundation, which focuses on providing educational opportunities and resources to underprivileged youth. 
Through this foundation, he has empowered countless young minds, offering them a chance at a brighter future. It's commendable to witness a superstar athlete like Butler using his success to uplift others. Oh, that one, that last sentence really nailed it. And let's not forget his time with the Miami Heat. When Butler joined the Heat, he brought with him a relentless work ethic and an unwavering desire to win. He became the heartbeat of the team, the driving force behind their success. His impact was felt both on and off the court as he embraced the Heat's culture of hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. During the Heat's incredible playoff run in 2020, Jimmy Butler showcased his true greatness. In the NBA Finals, he put on a masterclass performance, recording triple doubles, making clutch plays, and leading the Heat to with leading the Heat with unwavering passion. He showed the world that he could go toe to toe with the best and deliver when it mattered most. What makes Jimmy Butler special is his ability to elevate the play of his teammates. He brings out the best in those around him, inspiring them to reach new heights. It's a rare quality to possess, and it's what makes him a true leader on and off the court. The Miami Heat organization and its fans have embraced Butler as a symbol of their unwavering spirit. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about Jimmy Butler, we're not just talking about a basketball player. We're talking about a man who defied the odds, who uses his success to uplift others, and who has become the driving force behind one of the most passionate and resilient teams in the NBA. Jimmy Butler's impact reaches far beyond the hardwood. Thanks for joining me today on the show. Remember, sports is about more than just the game. It's about stories, the journeys, and the impact players like Jimmy Butler have on and off the court. Until next time, stay inspired and keep your eyes on the amazing career of Jimmy Butler. Was that not John Madden? It wasn't John Madden. I couldn't hit the timbre just the way that I wanted to. Well, you, I could you hear did it. a really good John Madden impression for most of that, for what it's worth. Well, good, I mean, this is what the game's all about. So okay? it's a, it's a sportscaster. He's a sportscaster. Not Jim Nance. Not Jim Nance. Not he, Al uh, Michaels? As far as I know, he doesn't call games at all. He's not a sportscaster. He's a, he's a sports pundit. Sports pundit. Okay. I think is the word that I would use. He's a, he's a, he has a show. Not a booth guy. Not a booth guy. As Skip far as Bayless. I know. He, Skip Bayless is close. Skip Bayless was, was tails or heads or whatever the opposite of what you flip okay. towards. <laughs> it's not I, – I have no idea then. Um, I, I really tried to Adam hit it Schefter. right. There was, no, Adam Schefter would have been good, although I don't like Chef oh, as, a, as a commentator. Um, I was trying to lean into the pauses. I think if I tell you that, it might reveal a little bit. No, it's I'm, tough. I'm it very is, stuck on John Madden. <laughs> it's very tough to um, do the pauses just right because he is a master of the unnecessarily long pause. And I say that meaning the pauses on his show are unnecessarily long. Is this Colin Coward? It is Colin Coward. Yeah, that that might have been your worst one so far. Great, uh, great speech, but like, yeah, you that was not. Uh, Colin Coward is much more. Um, what was the guy's name that was on Laces Out that wasn't Pat or AJ? Jerry. Jerry. He that's is, what Colin he, Coward sounds like. No, he would have been like, "Listen up." That's not. <laughs> that's 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 not that far off, Coward. Honestly. He's not, he's not as, a, like, high-pitched, but, yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, the pauses, yes, absolutely. That I show is few. unwatchable. Dude, he – tell me about Jimmy Butler. He's such an intelligent pundit, but, like, he, he is he just u- – he used to be, at least, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, what man – so did Skip Bayless. Skip, not as bad as Colin, and I think he has the, 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 the shortest knife in this – game i don't know what i'm trying to describe i don't either uh, that's a new the, one for like, me like i feel like colin cowherd Stephen a smith skip bayless and shannon sharp all kind of had to draw these swords and like sell their souls to sports broadcasting because i don't think that they believe half the crap they say anyway i think Stephen a does i don't i think he is bought into the character more than any of the others, but I still think it's entirely a character. He's the only one out of the four of them that I buy. Well, not Shannon. I, I like Shannon Sharp a lot, actually. Um, I do too. But like Stephen A, I buy as like a sports fan. What he like, I love that they let him just like be a Knicks fan during the playoffs. Yeah. I thought that was fun. 
I mean, the Knicks, the Knicks are a team like that, man. Like it, they're they're always gonna have fans. Like they're, you know, they're the Yankees of basketball. In that, like, New York has chosen to like live or die with the Knicks, no matter what. It doesn't matter yes. what the Brooklyn Nets do. Like, they could but win the a Knicks... championship, and it wouldn't be good enough for New York. Uh, yes. That is exactly correct. So the NBA Finals this year is a really interesting one, right? Because like obviously I'm pulling for Miami. Yeah, I would be pulling for Miami if we didn't know any. Like, I I would not be pulling nearly as hard. No, but I you know I've been with I've been with Miami since the LeBron days. Like I I get it. Eric Spolster is one of my favorite sports characters like ever. Yeah, uh, Pat Riley is the same. Like I, I love that team, top to bottom, and they've oh they're always interesting. But like this is Denver's first finals appearance ever. I don't think it's their first finals. No, appearance. it is. Think... <laughs> they have never won the conference before. Really? Yeah, I just looked it up. They have zero championships and one conference championship, which is 2023. Dang, one conference championship ever, which is this one. They never made it with uh, Carmelo. They never made it since then, obviously, because they were hot garbage. Um, and Pat Riley, on the other hand, the the GM or the owner, I'm not, or maybe both. I'm not really sure which of the Heat. Uh, I I saw a stat today has been involved in 25 percent of all NBA Finals, either as a player, I, as a coach, yeah, or as an exec. That's crazy. That's one of those stats that like. <laughs> That's one of those stats that makes you look the other way like, what? I read one of those about baseball today, actually. Um, there there have been two number one overall picks in baseball history to go on to make the Hall of Fame. That's crazy. Ever. That's S- Since they started counting 150 years ago. That's insane. Two number one overall picks are Hall of Famers. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is an interesting one because, like, I, like realistically, the world should be rooting for Denver. <laughs> like, they're they're the they're the Cinderella story, except they're not because they were the one seed, even though they're right. like, they were the worst one seed in like ten years. I mean, clearly they weren't. I right? Mean, like, <laughs> no, but like th- their record. Is oh yeah, is yeah, yeah. really low for a one seed. Like they they went fifty two or fifty three twenty nine. Yeah, that's not great. That's not great. Compared to, like, a couple years ago, the Warriors were like, yeah, we lost seven games. Yeah, but you also have to remember the West was not... The West, when the Warriors did that, LeBron wasn't in the West. Uh, well, the West was not what it was, yeah. You know, um, uh, I am, Jokic I am wasn't in the West. terrified for this finals. Oh, my God, four games. Of, like, the the of the of the fact that the East was just, like... Yeah, we we're we're teams. We have teams. We play basketball. We play basketball. We play basketball. And like, no, it doesn't matter who. I think I truly. I, I I hope the Heat win, but I do tend to feel like it does not matter who made it out of the East. They were always gonna get curb stomped. I think I think if Giannis made it, if the Bucks made it, I think that's really the only like competitive game. Oh, I actually think because the, I think the opposite. If Giannis makes it, the the Bucks go down in four, all day. No, because I think that like Giannis is the only. I'm trying to think of. Let's talk. Definitely let's not talk the about Giannis Antetokounmpo for a second, actually, because uh, th- that headline went around uh, of like th- of that 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 video of him being like, "No, I don't consider this season a failure." And yeah, that, I'm with him. And then that no, because he absolutely should consider it a failure. He failed to win a championship. Like, if you're a team that if you go into the one seed and you lose to the eight, that is a fail. Every day, every day of the week, every day of the week. I'm sorry, like this, this, this thing around, like, you know, what? So does every every team that doesn't win should consider themselves failures? No, obviously not. The San Antonio Spurs were never going to win a championship this year, right? Now they should consider w- themselves failures for other reasons. I think they right. Won I was going to say, games. I think if if one team is a failure in the NBA, it's the San Antonio Spurs Correct. right now. But like, for me, for me, the Bucks lost worse than the Spurs did. And like if you're if you're the guy on that team and you're like the loud guy that's like, you know, don't fuck with me, I'm the man, you gotta be the man. 
Like, what is the opposite of I'm him? Because that's what Giannis did in the in that first series. He's Giannis. He's nothing. He's nobody. He just he did not play like a former MVP at all. You know who you know who did play like a future J- playoffs MVP? James Butler. J- Jimmy Butler. That man has you know this is about to be if they win if they somehow win the NBA Finals that's the greatest playoff performance in history. Yes, easy. easy. Like easy, easy. Well, and this is this is. I don't necessarily think an advantage for Miami, but Tyler Hero is supposed to be coming back by Game Three. Uh, I don't know that they would even let him play, given that they're clicking on all cylinders without him. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything about the lineup right now. Depends on how the yeah. first couple games go. Right. I mean, right, if you right, go out right. and get boat raced, and then Tyler <laughs> right. Hero comes back in Game Three, yeah, you're gonna let you're gonna let. Uh, you know Jesse Pinkman in to score some three pointers. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just don't know how they're gonna freaking stop Jokic. The, like the question is, I don't know. One of the that things- dude has made some shots that like are impossible in this. It just this playoffs. Like the the amount of times that I see him just like throw the ball at the hoop, like in triple coverage from the behind three point line, and it just goes in. Like he's not he's not Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki had that like beautiful shot. It like looked weird and it was broken. But like he was a big guy that could that could shoot the ball. Jokic is like it's ugly, dude. It like doesn't look like it would work at all. He just chucks the ball at the hoop and it goes in. He's making like two two handed three pointers, making like chess pass three pointers. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and yeah, I, I mean it, it's uh. It's it's going to be an interesting one for sure cuz cuz they're very different teams they play very differently and uh, you know if you had asked me going into this season like do you think Nikola Jokic is one of the greatest big men to ever play basketball I'd have been like yeah probably not but he really he really showed up this year and um I hate that <laughs> and I hate that and I hate that <laughs> cuz they beat the Lakers <laughs> I know and I wanted to and see I it go wanted- back to like I just want I just want it to not be a fluke. I want people to shut up about the bubble year. It absolutely was not a fluke. It absolutely was not a fluke. Nothing LeBron James has done in his career has been a fluke. When people hit me with this, uh, LeBron James builds the team around him. That's why he wins all these games. Yeah, uh, that's correct. sports, buddy. Like, that's sports. Yeah, you have to be on a good team to win games. Like, oh my god, the 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 glorification of like, oh, Michael Jordan played by himself. That's not good. Also, when he played by himself, he lost. Yeah, and and it wasn't yeah. until Scottie Pippen showed up that he really started winning. Yeah, and he still had Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman and and guys whose names you know, right? Like, this he's right. not Damian Lillard in Portland right. by himself. Right. Oh, all right. NBA Finals starts, what, thir- tomorrow? When Thursday? The day this episode comes out. Yeah, Thursday. Oh, sorry. I guess you, you'd have to edit tonight. So Why? Realize. No, what's today? Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. God, I, the days of the week are really hard. I'll, I'll probably edit it tomorrow. Okay. I have no idea. So, yeah, though, Thursday. Starts, any, anything can starts, happen. So. Starts if today is June 1st, they start today. Yep. June 1st to June 18th. I remember at one point in my life a few months ago, I said the NBA Finals and playoffs took too long, and I disagree. Oh, no, I still think they take too long. No, this is great. NBA There's playoffs like take great games NBA every playoffs other take day. Too long. Yeah, but now and they're now they're there, every there was a, now they're every two days, like two days off in between each one until the end. Okay. Two I don't days know, man. I grew up watching baseball. You play every Three days night. is the is the shortest amount of time. Playoffs last like a week and a half. <laughs> uh, uh, baseball. Uh, I wish. I wish. All right, man. Well, this has been funsies. I will get to my story next week. Yay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take this away from you. No, I, you didn't take anything away from me. That was a blasty, and I'm very proud of you. Okay. You did incredible. Thank you. And I want you to go home and feel – well, you're already home. I want you to leave the call and feel good about yourself when you go to bed tonight. And I hope all the listeners enjoyed it too. Uh, because I enjoyed it, and I don't really care a shit what they think. Oh, nice. I mean, cool. I do, but I don't. I love that for them. Until next time, listener. 
Are we I care what the side? listeners think, but I don't care what the listeners think about what your performance. Oh, okay. I I'm see. not going to let them ruin it for you. I had fun. You had fun. I had fun. Everybody had fun. Uh, until next time, deuces. Arriva Dirch. Arriva Dirch.